Hello everyone, I hope uh, all of you are doing well. Uh, we're going to start off by looking at uh, a very simple problem on the method of uh, joints. Okay, uh, so problem. Uh, this is an example of uh, the simplest truss which is called as a triangular truss. Okay, so this is the simplest truss. This is called as a triangular truss. And uh, why am I starting off with the simplest problem is because I want to show uh, certain details that are involved in this problem. And uh, once we have those details uh, done, then we will start looking at things that are more complicated. All right. Uh, so in this problem, I'm going to have three bars connected together in the form of a triangle. Okay, so look at this. Uh, so I'm going to have one bar uh, here. Let me maybe bring it down here. Okay, then I'm going to have uh, one more. And uh, the third one, which is uh, connecting all of them together. And of course, I'm going to increase the thickness of each of these so that they look like actual bars of a truss. Okay, so there are three of them here. And uh, they are all connected together by means of uh, pins. Okay, so look at this. The first one here um, is uh, connected by means of a pin. Okay, uh, there is a pin at that point. Let me call that point as the, the point B. And then there is a pin here at uh, the point uh, which I'm going to call as the point A. And uh, this pin is attached to the ground. Okay, so there is a pin at A, and then there is also another uh, support at A at C here, which I'm going to call as a C. So there is a pin that connects these two bars together, and that pin is connected to the ground by means of a roller arrangement, as you're seeing here. Okay, uh, so there are three bars, and then there are three pins. Okay, uh, each of them, uh, the angle inside here, let me say, is uh, 60 degrees which means that uh, this is uh, each of these angles is 60 degrees so this is an equilateral uh, triangle from that uh, perspective okay and uh, we're going to have an external force that is acting on the pin at b okay so this force is going to be drawn in the direction shown this has a magnitude of 100 newtons okay so the external force acts at the pin b and let me maybe write down the details of these problems okay so three bars which are AB, BC, and AC are pin connected together at the ends uh, A, B, and C by means of pins or what we call as uh, joints. Okay. Uh, we're going to assume that these pins are very small um, in dimension. Okay, so assume the pins to be small in dimension. Okay, uh, so that you can treat them as uh, particles. Instead of treating them as a rigid body, the pin is going to be treated as a particle, okay? And uh, uh, the pin at A is uh, connected to the ground and then the pin at C is connected by means of a roller support, okay? So there is a roller support here. And then uh, here is a pin support. And as we know from uh, basic rigid body analysis, if you have a pin support, then you're going to have two support reactions with respect to the ground. And then if you have a roller support, you're going to have probably one here. Okay. Uh, what are we supposed to do in this problem? Okay. Obtain the force in each member of the truss and uh, state if they are in tension or compression okay so tension is going to be noted as capital t compression is going to be noted as capital c okay so this is the thing that uh, we need to uh, find in this uh, problem okay so obtain the force in each of the problems and then 
specify if they are in uh, the state of tension or if they are in a state of compression okay and then there are three bars here a, B, B, C, and A, C, they are all pin connected together uh, by means of pins or joints and we are going to assume the pins to be very small in dimension. Okay, And just for this particular problem, I am going to go step by step, but from uh, in the next problem that we will be solving on trusses, uh, we will not be using all these elaborate steps, we will directly be going on uh, to uh, drawing the pin diagrams and so on. Okay, And uh, I am going to be using the method of joints in this particular problem. Okay, uh, so we are going to use the method of joints. Okay, so use method of joints to analyze the problem. Okay, so let me write this properly so that everybody indeed knows that what I am writing is what it is. <laughs> so this is a method of joints to analyze the problem. Okay, all right, so here is the situation. Uh, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to take up uh, this uh, figure of mine, okay? And I'm going to bring it down to the next page, okay? I'm going to keep an eye on it. Um, well, I don't want to paste an image, but, but still want to keep an eye on it. And uh, here is uh, typically what I'm going to do. I'm going to dismantle the pin at B, dismantle the pin at A, and dismantle the pin at C. And I'm going to draw the free body diagram of each of these bars and the free body diagram of the pins as well. Okay, so this is my uh, strategy is uh, dismantle the entire structure or truss, which means that we will draw the free body diagram of bars A, B. B, C, and A, C, and draw the free body diagram of pins at A, B, and C. Okay, so this is the important thing, and uh, we also know based on assumptions that every bar of a truss is a two force member. Okay, so please go back and uh, look at our introductory section on uh, trusses. Uh, I'm gonna scoot this onto the side so that I can write down um, what I intended to write here. So based on our assumptions, we know based on our assumptions okay when I mean assumptions please look at my introductory lecture on trusses. Look at the introductory lecture on process okay that's supposed to be a truss apologies uh, please look at my introductory lecture on process uh, we know that based on our assumptions each bar of a truss of a truss is a two force member Okay, and I also remember, you know, some of you in your uh, midterm feedback were telling me that I'm taking a long time to solve these problems. Um, I can solve these problems pretty fast, trust me. Um, the reason why I'm taking a long time to solve these problems is I'm explaining the process of solving as I'm solving the problems. So this is mostly for the benefit of uh, the general audience. Um, but if, if it were up to me, and if I were just doing it for myself, I would be solving most of these problems 10 to 20 times faster than what I'm doing here. Okay, so uh, do not consider the time I take to solve these problems as something that you should also be taking. You should be taking much lesser time than me in terms of analyzing these problems. And that's exactly what you will be doing once you get a good handle of these concepts. Okay. All right, so I'm going to move on. And of course, you also see that I'm losing time when I'm drawing straight lines and so on because I never get to know how to draw straight lines properly. So all those things added up together is also going to be causing me to uh, take a longer time to solve these problems. That was just a joke. Uh, but anyways, uh, so I'm going to dismantle this entire structure. So what is going to happen? I'm going to remove the pin at A, B and C. So I'm going to have three bars in my hand and I'm going to have three pins. Okay, so here are the bars. Uh, let me copy each of them. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to draw each of them separately here. So watch this. Uh, so here is one. 
Then I'm gonna draw one more guy. I'm gonna copy that. Um, I'm gonna bring, I don't want to paste an image. I'm gonna just paste the entire bar by itself. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. Uh, let me do that, okay. And then let me bring the third creature as well. So copy that and then paste that here. Let me do it a little um, below, okay. And uh, what am I gonna have as well? I'm gonna have the pins. Right, so I'm going to draw these pins in the form of uh, dots or circles if you want. Okay, uh, so there's a pin here, then there's a pin here, okay, and then there is a pin here. Okay, so these are my pins, and uh, so these are going to be the pin at B, and the pin at A, and then the pin at uh, C. Okay, then this is going to be the bar AB, this is going to be the bar BC. And then this is going to be the bar AC, as you can very well see. Okay, now, the thing is this. Um, I'm going to start by looking at each of these bars here. And uh, you can very well see that uh, the bar AB is uh, connected to the pin at B, which means if there is a force at the point B on the bar AB, there is going to be an equal and opposite force back on the pin at B. Okay, so the force on the pins and the force on the bars, they will be equal and opposite to each other, okay? The force, uh, so this is a force pair or what we're gonna call as force pairs, okay? So, force exerted by pin on the bar is equal and opposite to the force exerted by the bar on the pin. Okay, this is essentially Newton's law of action and reaction. Law of action and reaction. Okay, and let me draw it out and then show it to you. Okay, now look at the bar AB. I'm going to assume that this uh, bar is in a state of uh, tension. Okay, so assume to be in tension. Now, is that correct? I don't know. I'm just going to assume it to be intention and I'm hoping that if it is correct, then I'll end up having a positive answer. If not, I'm going to have a negative answer. That is completely fine with me. So I'm going to draw a force here because it's a two force member. The force is just going to be along the line joining the two points, right? And I'm going to call this force as the force FAB. Okay, so this is the force FAB. This is the force FAB. Okay, which means that this force FAB, I'll just circle this here, this force FAB is the force exerted by the pin at B on the bar B, on the bar AB. Okay, so this is the force uh, exerted by the pin at B on the bar AB. Okay, which means that on the pin, I'm going to have an equal and opposite force back. Okay, so this force here, FAB is also, okay, and then let me maybe uh, draw a nice uh, circle around this guy. Okay, this is the force exerted by the bar AB on pin B and as you can see they are equal and opposite to each other and of course these forces are along the uh, line joining the points A and B so that is also something that you can uh, very well see and then I keep doing the same thing I go to the bar BC I'm going to assume it to be in tension okay so assume in tension which means that I'm going to have forces at the point B which is uh, trying to pull the bar out and uh, the force at the point c is going to pull the bar out as well and uh, this is a two force member which means that these forces are equal and opposite to each other and they share the same line of action this is fbc this is fbc which means that there's going to be an equal and opposite force back on the pin at b and i know some of you are thinking hey what about the pin at a and the pin at c All right so that's exactly what i'm going to be doing next and you will see that okay this force here is on the bar bc at the point c which means i'm going to have another equal and opposite force back on the pin at c okay so this is going to be the force f 
BC. Then I'm going to have a force FAB right here, okay, uh, which is uh, due to the other force that uh, you see on the bar AB. Okay, so this is going to be FAB equal and opposite to what I have drawn at the point A. So look at this. The force at the point A is equal and opposite to the one at the pin A. Force at the point B is equal and opposite to the one at pin B. Likewise for the other bars. And then I'm going to have one more thing here. FAC, assume intention. Okay, to begin with, you assume all of these to be in a state of tension. If you get a negative answer, that is okay. It means that they're not in tension. And I'm going to call this as FAC. This is FAC, which means around this pin C, I'm going to have an equal and opposite FAC. And then I'm going to have an equal and opposite FAC on this bar here. Okay, so this is also FAC. And of course, uh, this angle here, I know, is uh, 60 degrees. Okay, I know that this angle here is also 60 degrees. Okay, and then I'm missing one more thing is, uh, well, a couple of things actually. I'm missing the applied force at the point B. So that's something that I have to draw. Okay, so I'm going to say that is a value of 100 newtons. Okay, so the force is applied on the pin, right? This is something that we have seen in the assumptions of a truss. So the force of 100 newtons is acting on the pin at B. And then the other thing, there is a roller support at C, which means that I'm going to have a reaction from the roller. Okay, so this is a, not a straight line, but I just want to make sure it's a straight line. So this is CY. Okay, and then what is CY? CY is the roller support. Okay, so roller support reaction. And likewise, at the point A, I had a pin support, right? Which means that I'm going to have two pin reactions here, okay? This is going to be AY. And then I'm going to have another force, which I'm going to call as the force AX. Okay, and what are these AX and AY? So these AX and AY, due to the pin support. at A. Okay, this was due to the roller support reaction at the point C. Okay, so the reactions, everything are put at the point C and at the point A. Okay. And so what did we do in this problem? We did the following. We completely took the truss and then broke it up into different pieces. Each of the bars, because of the fact that the assumptions enable us to treat them as two force members, I'm drawing them as two force members, as you can see here. And then I have the equal and opposite forces which are drawn back on the pins uh, based on the statement that I had made here. The force exerted by the pin on the bar is equal and opposite to the force exerted by the bar on the pin. Okay, so these are equal and opposite to each other. Okay, as you can see from the figures that we have drawn here. And then I'm assuming each of the bars to be in tension. Is that correct? I don't know. But typically, whatever I do is I, I start off by assuming all of the bars to be in tension and then I draw them in the following manner. So I just want to make a quick note. You can see that if I'm assuming the bars to be in tension, the forces of these bars are going to be pulling on the ends of the bar. Okay. So something that I want to see uh, a note of. Okay. So I always assume each bar of the truss to be in tension which means that if the bar is in tension is in tension then the force of that bar on a pen on the pin will point away from the pin pulling on the pin okay so this is a very key statement okay i always assume each of the bars of the truss to be in tension there is a why there is no reason because uh, i would say why not okay what are you going to do and then the other thing is if a bar is in tension, okay, then the force of that bar on the pen will point away from the pen 
which means that it will be pulling on the pen and uh, clue case in point is okay i take this force fac right look at this force fac here this force fac is pulling on the pen if i look at the force fbc i had assumed that to be intention that force was pulling on the pen likewise fab here is pulling on the pen fac is pulling on the pen fab and fbc are pulling on the pens okay so this is the reason why uh, we are looking at it this way and um, it is completely fine whether you want to assume it to be intention or compression but for the sake of uniformity always start off by assuming each of the bars to be intention okay so for uniformity start the analysis by assuming each bar to be intention Okay, and if you get a negative answer, after solving, this implies that the bar is actually in compression. Is indeed in compression. Okay, and uh, in the method of joints, okay, in the method of joints, you analyze the forces on each of the pin or the joints. Okay, so analyze, analyze the forces on each pin by assuming equilibrium of the pin. Okay, so this is essentially the method of joints and that's what we're going to be uh, doing. And uh, the other thing that I want to mention is since we assume the pins to have no dimension, okay, so since the pins are treated as a particle or no dimensions, when you look at equilibrium, or equilibrium at a pin we are going to have only two equations of equilibrium it is just that the sum of all the forces are zero assuming a positive direction and then sum of forces in the y direction is uh, zero okay so which means that at each pin at each pin we have two equations of equilibrium okay and uh, these are your two equations of equilibrium okay so we are going to look at each and every pin now and I'm going to take each of these pins and I'm going to come down and uh, look at them. Okay, uh, so I'm going to copy each of these pins. So I'm not now going to be worried about the bars of the truss because they've done their job. Okay, so I'm going to look at each and every one of these uh, pins here. So copy one of them and then bring them down here. Okay, that's the first one. Right, and of course I don't need that guy. Then I bring the next one which is the pin at A. Okay, so I copy that and then I bring that particular pin. Once again, I don't need the image. Okay, so this is the pin at A. And then I have the pin at C. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to bring the pin at C. Okay. And I can immediately see that the total number of unknowns here, how many unknowns do I have? You know, if I look at the unknowns, I have FAB is an unknown, FBC is an unknown, two unknowns, then FAC is an unknown, three unknowns, the reaction AX and AY, four and five, and then the support reaction CY. So I have six unknowns. Each pin has two equations of equilibrium. So I have a total of six equations of equilibrium. Okay, so let me write that down. Okay, so six unknowns now.
unknown forces okay what are the forces f a b f a c f b c c y a x and a y each pin has two equations of equilibrium so three pins gives me three times two is equal to six equations of equilibrium I'm just going to copy that word from here I'm getting a little lazy well my cost of being lazy is that I have to also be careful okay uh, which means that I can solve for each of them okay so six unknowns uh, let me write the six properly uh, so that is very important you have as many number of unknowns as you have equations okay so which means see number of unknowns is equal to the number of equations available and uh, such a system is called as a well-defined or a well-posed uh, mathematical system and uh, so typically for us this is always going to be the case okay uh, so how do I start my analysis okay so how to start the analysis okay so typically this is what I do and of course, uh, as you will see, we are not going to be doing all these steps each and every time when we solve a new problem. Okay, this is since the first problem that we're solving. So we're taking all these extra measures of caution. Okay, so how to start the analysis? Look at the pin with the lowest number of unknowns. Okay, so look at the pin with the lowest number of unknowns. and then solve and move on to the next pin and so on okay so this is typically my strategy so find the pin with the lowest number of unknowns usually this works usually most of the other times you know i just start looking at okay pin a how many forces are there okay let, let's take a look at that so so i'm going to go to the pin at a how many forces are there i have f a b f a c a x and a i have four unknowns how many equations of equilibrium only two so that is absolutely a no-go okay if i go to the pin at c i have three unknowns f b c f a c and c y how many equations of equilibrium i have only two so that is also not a great place to start, which leaves me with pin B, right? So this is the pin that I'm going to be starting my analysis with. Okay, so start with pin B. Uh, so here is the free body diagram of the pin. Okay, so these are actually all the free body diagrams of the pin. So let me uh, maybe write that down. So this is the FBD of pin B. Okay, this is the FBD of pin A. And this is the FBD of pin C. Okay, so these are all the uh, free body diagram of each of these uh, pins. So that's something that we have already drawn as a matter of our analysis. So that's something you have to draw when you're doing your analysis. I'm going to look at the pin at B as I have here. Okay, uh, so let me bring it to the center stage. Uh, I know, of course, that uh, this is the uh, pin at B. So I'm going to draw... Um, I'm just say that okay this is the free body diagram of pin B okay why did I start here because I have only two unknowns here okay and I'm gonna cut this off okay and I can immediately see that this uh, force FAB uh, can be split into two uh, components one along the horizontal one along the vertical okay so let me do that right away uh, so FAB I can have a vertical component as I'm going to be drawing here and then a horizontal component and I know that the angle is uh, 30 degrees which is half of the 60 degrees so this is 30 degrees okay so this is going to be F A B cosine 30 F A B 
sine 30 and then FBC once again is also going to be broken into the same number of uh, components along the uh, vertical and the horizontal okay so here I have one and then here is the other one okay and uh, so this is going to be FBC sine 30 because this is also 30 degrees and then this is going to be FBC cosine 30 okay so let me maybe scoot this and write that down there and let me move this guy here let me move that guy there okay so this is fantastic then i choose a direction for being positive or negative i can assume that okay positive x is to the right and positive y is upward so no harm done there so this is going to be positive there are no moments which means that i don't need to uh, draw my circular arrows and so on okay so then i start summing forces up okay so sum of all the forces in the x direction is equal to zero what are the forces i'm going to have minus f a b sine 30 plus f b c sine 30 is equal to zero which implies that f a b is equal to f b c so this is the first thing i find out okay then i sum forces in the y direction okay sum of forces in the y direction all the forces pointing up are treated as positive minus 100 f a b cosine 30 f b c cosine 30 is equal to zero but f a b is equal to f b c so i can say that f b c times cosine 30 two times f b c times cosine 30 is equal to 100 with a negative sign or f b c can be solved for okay and uh, this is going to give me minus 57.7 newtons okay so which tells me that f a b is equal to f b c is minus 57.7 newtons hang on with that negative sign do not change it okay the negative sign essentially tells me that f a b and b c are actually in compression okay so the negative sign tells me that a b and b c are in compression because we started off by assuming them to be in tension okay so which means that if you start randomly assigning directions to all these bars then it will be very hard for you to keep track of it which is why i'm saying whenever you're starting a problem on process always assume each of the bars to be in a state of tension okay so I have two of these uh, unknown solved for. Then I go and see. Okay, I'm done with pin at uh, B. And where would, I, where would I go next? So I'm done with the pin at B. Okay, so this is done. Then I either go to pin at A or pin at C. If I look at the pin at A, I have found out F, A, B. But I don't know F, A, C. I don't know A, X. And I don't know A, Y. Which means I'm still going to have three unknowns. So this is not a good choice. Which means that I next need to go to the free body diagram of pin at C. Okay. So I'm going to take the free body diagram of the pin at C, copy that, uh, and then bring it down here. Okay. So this is now the free body diagram of the pin at C. And uh, so let's write that. FBD of pin C. And the important thing is also that, you know, I'm not interested in finding the CX and CY because I'm not asked to find it. If I need to find it, I can. But I'm just interested mostly in finding the forces of these bars. Okay, so which is why I'm not going to be worried about calculating the support reactions, but I still need to choose a location where there are as little number of uh, support reactions as possible. Now, here is something I can do. FBC, I'm going to break it into a component, okay, along the vertical and the horizontal. Okay, that's typically what I'm going to be doing. So this angle was uh, 60 degrees. So this is FBC sine 60 and fbc cosine 60 okay and uh, so these are the forces that i have typically i'm just going to set up and say okay x and y coordinates are positive in this following manner 
okay so this is uh, positive x and then positive y please notice that i did not change the direction of fbc even though i knew it to be negative okay so in that sense this is going to be minus 57.7 times sine 60 okay likewise this is going to be minus 57.7 cosine 60 i did not change the sign of fbc even though i got it to be negative i could do that but i don't do that because i don't want to get confused in the middle of the problem and assume hey did i really change the sign or not okay uh, so then i sum forces in the x direction okay what are the forces i'm going to have look at this this is minus f bc cosine 60 okay because it is pointing to the left and i'm saying things pointing to the right are positive and then i'm going to have minus f a c is equal to zero okay which means that uh, f a c is equal to minus f b c cosine 60 or f a c is minus f b c which is minus 57.7 cosine 60 or f a c is going to be the following Okay, it's going to be having a magnitude of 28.8 newtons. Okay, so now we have found out all of our values. Okay, something to keep in mind is this. This represented the magnitude. Okay. The direction of FBC cosine 60 was pointing to the left, which is why I have this negative sign here. Okay, that is not based on the magnitude, that is based on the direction already assumed. But then on top of that, the magnitude itself is negative, which is why FAC is positive. Okay, so in summary, I have FAB, sorry, and then FBC, and then FAC. I had obtained FAB to be negative, which means, and I'm going to say FAB is equal to 57.7 newtons in compression or C. Okay, FBC was 57.7 newtons, which means that FBC is also going to be the same thing. Okay, so I'm just going to say, okay, once again, I don't need an image. And uh, that's what I have. And then my final answer for FAC was 28.8 newtons, which means that FAC is equal to 28.8 newtons in tension or capital T because I obtained this to be a positive sign. Okay, so this is something that is extremely important and required of all of these problems. Once again, my straight lines are going to be the devil in my life. Okay, and uh, almost there. All right, so. Um, this is a nice problem. It's an interesting problem. It's a fairly straightforward problem, as you will see. Okay, uh, what is the basic idea is that uh, here is the basic idea. I start off by looking at this truss. Based on the assumption, I know that each and every bar of the truss is a two force member. I dismantle all the pieces of this truss. We will not be doing this elaborate procedure from the next problem onwards. This is the first problem we are doing, which is why I am doing it in a step by step slow process. Okay. I'm breaking down all the bars, assuming all of them to be in tension. You may ask why. I may ask why not. Who is stopping me? Okay. The reason why I'm doing it is because I want to assume uniform behavior throughout. And then if I get a negative sign, I will know, okay, it is contrary to what I have assumed. So if I assume it to be in tension and if I get a negative sign upon solving, I know that it is not in tension, it is in compression. And it is easy for me to keep track of this throughout the problem rather than just assign some random directions to all of these uh, forces on the bars of the truss, okay? Then I draw the pin free body diagrams, as you have seen here. Assuming it to be in tension, each and every force of the bar is going to be pulling on the pin, pulling on the pin. You'll see pulling, FAB pulling on the pin at B, FBC pulling on the pin at B, because I've assumed it to be in tension, okay? And that's a consequence of having equal and opposite reaction FAB is equal and opposite as you will see here this FAB is equal and opposite to that FAB okay and then once I have that ready I'm just going to do the equilibrium of each of these pins I had six unknowns I have six equations of equilibrium and I'm pretty much good to go I can solve this entire problem 
and that's uh, essentially what I do. I start off by looking at the pin with the lowest number of unknowns, and then I move on from there. Okay, start with the pin free body diagram at B, forces in the x direction, forces in the y direction. Then I go to the pin free body diagram at C, forces in the x direction. I'm not interested in CY. So I'm not spending my time finding CY, but if I had to find CY, okay, I can always uh, sum forces in the Y direction. Okay, so if we had to find, find CY, uh, let's see, then sum forces in the Y direction. But I'm not interested in it because the problem did not ask me to do it, which is why I'm not doing it, okay? Then I list out all my answers. I make sure that I do not change the sign in the middle of the problem. You see, I'm still keeping the sign of FBC to be negative. I do not change it until I come to the final step of the problem where I then say, okay, I got a negative sign. So this is actually in compression. I got a negative sign. So this is actually in compression. I got a positive sign. So this is in tension. All right. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, take care and uh, stay safe. Bye-bye.